Hello, and today I have made a couple of creations that I would like to show off. I would have done it, like, while playing Trailmakers, but sadly, because it sounds like I have a turboprop jet engine in my room whenever I play, I am unable to do that. So this will be a voiceover over footage of it being in use. I have made a Shahed 131, Shahed 136, two versions of an FPV drone, and a drone that can drop bombs, and a Reaper drone, MQ-9. Basically, these are just some drones that I made based off of the same exact system to blow up my friends more efficiently. All in all, my favorite ones are the FPV drones, so let's start with that. The construction is very simple. I prioritized the size, however, to get the small size, sadly because they had some blocks were even width and some blocks were odd width, I had to make it asymmetric, which does result in slight roll issues at times, but it does mean that I now have a very basic and very effective small drone which I can blow up tanks with. The drones themselves, very simple to control. Shift is the camera controls, space is the thrust, their detonation is impact, so you have to hit something and it does it automatically. And WASD for controls. For the camera, on the FPV drones, I highly recommend moving your camera up all the way. It is limited to 30 degrees, so when you shift your camera up 30 degrees and you look at a target, because the thrust relative to your camera is now pointing 30 degrees forward, it goes roughly in the direction that you're looking. It's very useful. You can also look down, which allows you to look down and around and hover in place to search for a target without actually going towards anywhere. These two functions are very useful, but when in actual flight and maneuvering, I recommend to not touch the mouse so that the point of reference is not moving and so that you know where your position is and if you're rolling because your mouse is moving or if you're rolling because the actual drone itself is rolling. For, for the FPV drones, I just have an explosive one and uh, one that has even more explosives. Why? Because why not? The simple one has only two propellers and one explosive on the nose and I had to place it on the nose rather than in the back or in a balanced position to even out the roll discrepancies because otherwise it would not detonate if it was anywhere but the nose. The highly explosive drone uh, instead uses four propellers, allowing it a greater degree of mobility. And because it has an increased mass, the gyros can have an increased input force, which still doesn't jitter the building as a whole, because if gyros are set too high, the entire creation starts vibrating, which becomes increasingly unbearable when you're in a first-person perspective on it. And I should mention now that all of these systems are contained within these crates that I made. They're nothing much, they're just there to camouflage. They have a couple of sensors on the inside which act as switches for the lights on the inside and the seat on the inside. And you can also click T on any of the crates to close the door to make it fully look like a crate. And they are, they are the dimensions of crates in game, so most things that are able to shift around crates should be able to shift around the system as a whole. However, it is not recommended to control systems while it is being moved due to the fact that although I wanted to use electromagnets or anchor pins to hold the RC glitch bit in on the inside, sadly I could not. I don't know why anchor pins didn't work and electromagnets just ended up taking too much volume and were inconsistent, so I ended up just using normal blocks and holding it in just using normal physics. Moving on from the FPV drones, which are arguably the funnest part of this kit, the Shahed 131 and 136 are, in real life, Iranian one-way attack drones. And if I take out the military speak, it's basically a very cheap gliding missile that you could chuck at things. That's all it is. It, it just explodes. That's all that one-way attack means. 
sadly for the Shahed 131, because I had very restrictive size limitations, I was unable to make it control effectively. One of the biggest reasons this was, was because of the physics. So something interesting happens with RC systems as a whole, will they move far away from players. The rate of physics updates drops from 60 frames a second closer to 10 frames a second or 5 frames a second. So aerodynamics gets very chunky, for lack of a term. It feels as if you're in a constant state of going through turbulence whenever you try to maneuver. And sadly, this is unavoidable without having a player near the RC system which defeats the entire point of a drone, that being, it being without a person within it. So because of this, whenever you're make, making or designing your own systems, I personally highly recommend you rely very heavily on gyros and make the entire system in, in a single weld group. That way you don't have to deal with aerodynamics being a major factor. And the less moving parts you have, overall, generally, the better and more consistent and more responsive these systems are. As you can see from maneuvering Shahed 131s and 136s, and the Reaper, using aerodynamics tends to have some issues, to put it lightly. Because of the one Shahed 131's limited size, it could only fit a payload of one TNT. But overall, it's pretty nice, and it can glide pretty well. Because of the positioning of the lift and the size limitations, because it couldn't move it and add counterweights and whatnot, it is constantly pitching up. However, when you cut the thrust, it immediately starts constantly pitching down. So the pitch up and pitch down controls of W and S actually don't do much for the Shahed 131, and you pitch up and down mostly using the thrust. Thrust on, you pitch up, thrust down, you pitch down. The Shahed 136 can actually actually holds 6 TNT, which is much better and much more accurate. It also has control systems that are actually halfway decent. The lift is relatively balanced. The control systems for the roll and the pitch are decently responsive without being too responsive. Again, aerodynamics and RC make it an absolute nightmare to control because, you know, delayed aerodynamics responsiveness drops by a bunch. Nonetheless, it moves relatively fast, is pretty effective, and can glide very long ranges without too much human input, exactly what the Shahed series was designed for. And of course, all of these things that I'm referencing will be in the description below to download as a creation, so you'll be able to mess around and expand on it in your own ways. Finally, I have the dropping drone, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's just, an, just a small drone that's made to drop explosives on other things. I find this one particularly fun because unlike the other two, which you can see them coming or are coming in a relatively direct path, by the way, I recommend a 30 to 45 degree approach angle so that you can, so, cause coming in from directly the top tends to have issues. Unlike those, the dropping drone just hovers above the target and drops a bomb. There are a couple of issues because, one, because the delayed physics, if the bomb dropping is synced with the physics frame, it will sometimes just phase through the ground completely and ignore the target, which sadly there's not much I can do there. Uh, also the controls are different. It is instead G for camera. Because shift and control are instead throttle controls for the thrust up and down. So if you tap shift, you'll keep going up slowly. If you hold shift and then let go, you'll keep going up but faster this time. Tap and control will slow down your upwards, dis uh, your upwards ascent, so on and so forth. And WASD are all strafing controls. The camera looks straight down and the drone stays perfectly level. When then you click space and it detaches the bomb, which is relatively accurate. It could drop from significantly above 300 meters, although I do not know the exact range. Because of this, and 300 meters being the lock-on range for guns, it is practically impossible to spot 
However, this also means that the delay on dropping and impact is quite large. And then finally, I have the Reaper drone. Not much, literally just the previous systems, but just in a plane, very small plane that can glide around with a scoped in camera so that you can see your targets. None of these systems are particularly special or particularly amazing. But I'm hoping it, is, it inspires someone and someone can make their own unique versions and specialize them for their own needs. However, if you do want to advance them, I could perhaps give a suggestion. Now, I did do this one myself, but I feel like other people should also have some challenge of building these systems. So for a fun little thing, try to link multiple drones together. It is possible to link multiple FPV drones to be controlled by the same controller system, by the same creation, so it is totally possible to create drone swarms. So have fun with that knowledge, go out and build cool creations, and maybe think about, you know, blowing up your friends with some cool new drones.